Hi, in this tutorial I'm going to cover setting up SDL 2.0 for use on Mac OS X. In the suite of SDL 2.0 tutorials that I've created, OS X is by far the easiest to set up. The first thing we need to do is open your SDL download directory, find the Xcode project, and open it. SDL supports building in a variety of forms, use it from a framework, a shared library, a static library, or a standard DMG. I choose to use a framework. It's, in my opinion, the simplest, as you just add it to your project and everything is already set up for you. So with framework selected, I'm going to ensure that release build is set, and build the project. Nice and quickly, SDL 2.0 has built and I can right click on the sdl2.framework and open it in Finder. I store my frameworks in slash libraries slash frameworks. So I'm going to copy this SDL framework in there. Overwrite my existing. Now that that's now that, that framework is built and stored. I'm ready to create my SDL 2.0 project. So SDL will handle all the Windows creation for us. So we simply want to create a command line tool using C++. The include for SDL is SDL2 so it can't be found. Quite obviously simply because we haven't added the framework to our project. So in the build phases, the link binary with libraries, we need to add the framework. The framework won't be visible here because it's be stored in a separate location. So if I add other and go to library frameworks, you can see that my SDL2 framework is here. So, we've added the framework, but still can't find it. Why? Well, as well as adding the framework, we need to tell Xcode where to find that framework. So, if you go to the build settings and search for search paths, you can see that here we have framework search paths. So if we add a new entry to that, to and now go back to our code, great. We can now find the correct header file and the framework has been correctly linked to the project. So I'm going to pause this video quickly and populate uh, this main.cpp. Um, with a bit of STL code, which I can then explain in detail. Now you can see that uh, this main CPP has been populated. Um, we set up STL video. I've set my uh, login to verbose so that while in development I can see anything that STL needs to tell me in the log window, which will be in this um, section at the bottom right. Um, I set up my GL attributes. Um, without these, I think SDL will default to OpenGL 2.0, 2.1, whereas I want to use OpenGL major version 3, minor version 2. And then I've pretty much set up double buffering and told it that I want a 24 bit uh, depth buffer size. I create the window, given it a name, um, its width and height. Um, I tell SDL that I want to use OpenGL and to show the window once it's created. Here's my event loop. This uh, will process, uh, continually pulling for events, and I simply display some data for each event that's received. If we now run this project, we get a 
Mac OS X window with our Windows title and our default buttons, which if we press, will quit because I've hooked into the SDR quit event, which is fired when you press that red X. And by setting it down to true, the event loop uh, exits, we destroy our window, quit SDL, and our application finishes. Um, looking here in the output, you can see some of the events that are printed, um, that we received keyboard focus, that the mouse entered, the mouse left. Um, you may notice that I have not added any events for keyboard or mouse input into this event loop. The reason for this uh, is that originally I had all my events in this uh, event loop. However, in my game I was getting some strange behavior that the character would sometimes freeze and then after a number of seconds there'd be a lot of unexpected, unpredictable movement. Uh, some research uh, told me that this was because the event loop isn't necessarily always real-time, but sometimes the events build up and then they're flushed and processed quickly. So all my mouse and keyboard movements had built up and then been processed on batch. The suggested fix for this was to use uh, what SDL call an event watch. An event watch injects itself at an earlier stage in the event processing loop um, and seems to be a lot more performant. Since using an event watch, I haven't had any of those stalls in input processing. Uh, adding an event watch is achieved simply by using the call SDL add event watch. Using this first parameter is my event watch callback function, which I'm going to populate in a moment. And this second parameter is a void pointer to whatever you want to pass as a parameter to the callback. Um, in this simple example, I don't need to pass anything. However, you may wish to pass your game object or your character object in order to apply uh, the events to, to that. Um, let me quickly copy and paste my event uh, filter. So here's the event filter with the first parameter void pointer being what you passed as the second parameter to your add event watch function and we also get the event. So by catching here the uh, events that you want to catch at an earlier stage, um, returning zero will stop SDL processing the event further I believe and then returning one pretty much tells SDL that you haven't done anything with this event and that it should carry on as normal. Um, in here I'm catching key down, key up, mouse motion, mouse buttons and mouse wheel. So if we quickly sort of extend this a little bit and run the project again, you can see that we're receiving real-time data on mouse moves, keyboard presses, and so I, I, I'd sincerely recommend that you use this method in your, in your game. Um, as I said, it is. Since I've started using it, it seems to be a lot more performant without any of those unexpected delays. So now that we're set up using SDL 2.0, it is that simple. Um, I'm going to quickly add some support for OpenGL 3. Even though SDL is built on top of OpenGL, um, it, adding SDL doesn't in turn add OpenGL to your project. So you need to follow the same sort of process and add the OpenGL framework. So there it is. And now that it's added, we can add the correct OpenGL header, which on OSX for OpenGL 3 is OpenGL slash GL3. And as with my other tutorials on SDL, I'm simply going to update the screen um, with a random color every frame. So here we set the GL color to a random RGB value and we clear the color bit, deck bit, and sense of The color bit is the only one that we're really interested in right now. So if we run that, oh, a crash. Um, in GL clear color. 
So this you know, caught me out the first time I started using STL. Um, again, even though I've created STL to use OpenGL, you need to explicitly request a GL context. If you fail to do so, the first OpenGL call you make in your code will create a crash in the OpenGL driver. So in here, after creating the window successfully, I'm going to create an OpenGL context with the current window. As well as creating it, we must remember to destroy it when we're finished. So down here. So there's the context deleted. Now if I run, okay, so no crash. However, nothing's happened. Um, let's try and figure out why. The reason nothing has been rendered is that, as you, if you remember, we've set up to use double buffering. However, we're never requesting the back buffer to be blitted to the screen. Um, SDL has a nice and simple function to do that. So after our rendering is complete, we call SDL GL swap window and give it a pointer to our current window. And now when we run, there you go. OpenGL is updating the screen with a random color every frame. In my other tutorials on SDL, I also show how to use C++11. Um, in a platform such as Android, this is a more complicated process. However, OS X, Xcode, by default, have support for C++11. But for completeness, I'm going to go through the same process and show you how to do it anyway. Here's a very simple graphics class. This, uh, in its update, it does what we were previously doing by uh, setting the clear color to a random RGB value and updating the, the screen accordingly. So here, if we try and use a unique pointer, which is part of the C++ standard as of C++11. We got a, a, a compile error. Xcode suggests that it doesn't know what unique pointer is, but it does know what std unique pointer is. Okay, that's a very good hint. Uh, there's two ways to remedy this. We can either put std colon colon before every list of unique pointer, or if we want to use it far wide, just say using namespace std. So now instead of explicitly using OpenGL to clear the screen, if we use our graphics update function. Successful build. And there you go. That's how you set up SDL 2.0 on OSX to use OpenGL and C++11.